This very excursion is being sold right now on our brand new enthusiast auction site tflbids.com so check out the link in the description below if you want the chance to own this exact Ford. Hey everybody I've got such a fun video for you today because what we have here are two of probably the least fuel efficient vehicles of all time. The V10 Ford Excursion and the 8.1 liter GMC Yukon XL and in this video we're going to find out simply how bad is the fuel economy and which one is worse. These SUVs are two dinosaurs from a time that has come and definitely gone. These are based on heavy duty platforms and the Ford Excursion is based on the late 90s Power Stroke. Now this is a 2000 model year and you had a choice of three engines, well actually four engines depending on the model year. You had the 5.4 V8, you had the 6.0 diesel and then the 7.3 liter diesel. This one though is probably the least fuel efficient of all of them. This is a 6.8 liter Triton V10. Now the Triton V10 was designed to replace the legendary 460 cubic inch big block V8. And what they did is they took their modular architecture, the uh, basically the 5.4 liter Triton V8, and then added two cylinders to it and a bunch of balancing shafts. And what you were left with was 10 cylinders and six 1,800 cubic centimeters worth of displacement. Now it had an iron block, but aluminum heads and single overhead cams, which made this engine seemingly far more advanced than, well, that GMC. Now this is a 2500 Yukon XL. So this was also an HD platform. And under the hood, most of these had a six liter V8. This one has 8,100 cubic centimeters worth of iron block and iron head V8. These engines weighed over 700 pounds. It's like a diesel engine, but of course gas. Push rod V8 as well. So this is old school, old school, old school. Fuel injected, of course, but by modern day standards, this thing is an absolute dinosaur. But the pro is they last forever. Uh, they also make pretty good torque. And most interestingly, I think you'll find uh, both of these are pretty darn unfuel efficient. But which one is worse? Well, it's time to go fill them up at the pump, run our loop, come on back, and see which one got the worst MPG. I've got some really exciting news. This video is brought to you by our new fuel sponsor, Sinclair. And I'm a big car enthusiast. You're probably a big car and truck enthusiast if you're watching this. And I didn't know this, but Sinclair actually has this awesome app called DinoPay. You can plug in your bank information and then save 10 or 20 cents plus per gallon, which is like a huge deal, especially when you're dealing with these old school V10s and V8s. You can save a lot of money using Sinclair. So we're gonna fill up here, use our two click method, and then probably do right around 100 miles. Come on back here and see which one is thirstier. So when it comes to filling up these old beasts, well, this was an era of insanely large fuel tanks. So we had a Chevy Silverado in 2020 that had a um, like a 24 gallon tank. Same thing with a Ram Rebel. And it was just too small, especially when you're towing, you're always out of gas. But this Yukon XL 2500 took 35.481 gallons from nearly empty. And I believe this had almost a 39 gallon fuel tank. And if you think that's big, that excursion over there, 44 gallons. Now the advantage is if you're towing and getting 10 miles per gallon, it's like a 400 mile range, which is pretty awesome. The disadvantage is, you kinda gotta get out your credit card there. So once again, this video couldn't be possible without my buddy Brendan and his amazing fleet of vehicles, including that 03 Yukon XL. Now, Brendan, what are your bets? What do you think you're gonna average in that GMC? Honestly, I'll be pretty happy if I see uh, double digits in this thing. <laughs> Double digits. So you're hoping for what? 10, 11? Yeah, I think if I can hit the 10 or 10.5, I'll be pretty happy. Welcome to 2003, folks. Yeah, I'm kind of in a similar boat. Now, I have a much smaller displacement engine, so I only have 6.8 liters. Um, I'm going to go more optimistic. I think this beast is going to do a whopping 12 mpg. Um, now, how has ownership experience been of that GMC? You've had it for, uh, you know, a couple months now. What do you think of it? You know, I still think this is the pinnacle of comfort when it comes to GM SUVs. Uh, I've had to do a little bit of deferred maintenance to it, but overall, it's been pretty good. Yeah, do you like that mighty 8-liter V8? I mean, do you like the power and the, <laughs> and the sound? 
Yeah, actually, I uh, I can't wait to tow with it. My old tow rig was using the 5.3, and uh, going uphill and in the mountains, you definitely felt it. So, kind of excited to see how the difference is with this 8.1. And that's really what these engines were designed for, right? They were towing engines. Now, unfortunately, GM never offered the Duramax in the Suburban or the Yukon, which I always thought was silly, uh, especially in the 2500, because Ford had the mighty power strokes in this thing. Um, but yeah, for, I mean, most of the 20th century, sure there were diesels, but a lot of folks would opt for big block V8s like the, the Ford 7.5 or the 454 Chevrolet engines. And this is kind of the tail end of that trend where these are the big old school towing engines. So yeah, I'm excited to see what the fuel economy will be like. Now it's gonna be mostly highway, although we'll probably do some city because we're gonna grab some lunch. Um, and we're gonna do the same route with both vehicles, same speed, not driving them super fast, certainly not babying them. And may even swap order to kind of keep the MPG fair in terms of drag and we'll see which one's better. Just admit it, you want the comfort of these seats for half the, half the drive, don't you Tommy? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So you've got the big squishy GM leather recliners and I have the Ford cloth XLT seats. Honestly, the seats aren't horrible in the Ford, but compared to the Lazy Boy, the GMC, it's kind of hard to beat. Absolutely. I know my butt's not going to be sore after this drive. All right, cool. We'll you in like 50 miles. <laughs> this Ford excursion has really, really grown on me. I wasn't a huge fan, admittedly, when we first bought it. I just thought it was kind of excessive for the sake of being excessive. But once you kind of live with it, you really understand what Ford was going for. And what they were going for was the ultimate, most capable SUV of all time. This is based, of course, on the F-250 Super Duty platform, albeit with some modifications. But it really is just a Super Duty with an extra row of seats and an enclosed bed. And that just makes it so cool. It's such a useful tool. You can carry the full family plus the entire group of neighborhood dogs and tow a 10,000 pound boat. And then if you need to go off-road, you just stick it in the four-wheel drive. And if you need to put stuff on the roof, you can do that. And if you need to carry 146 cubic feet worth of whatever, you can do that as well and still do it in relative comfort. Now, in terms of overall comfort, it's not quite as good as at GMC. The solid front axle is not as refined. The steering is not nearly as precise or sophisticated. But that kind of adds to the charm a little bit, this looseness in the steering, the kind of jitter over washboards and big expansion joints. It just makes it a fun experience. And it really is not a bad road tripper because you sit so high above the entire world. This is several inches taller than pretty much any modern SUV on the market. And you really get that sensation when you're behind the wheel. These big towing mirrors, they stick out wide. The width is awesome for road trips. You got plenty of shoulder room to the person next to you. It, just, just a comfortable cruiser. Now these big block gas engines, both the Ford and the GMC, are kind of relics of the past, which was a cool point in history, but is unlikely to ever return in 2022 going into 2023 or the foreseeable future with tightening fuel economy and emissions regulations. These old beasts just don't make a lot of sense anymore, but it's kind of a relic of the 20th century. You see, back in like the 20th century, if you had a big load or you had a big boat or a big camper and you wanted a truck to tow it, a lot of folks wouldn't opt for a diesel engine. They would go with a big block gas engine. And of course, that has changed a lot in the last couple of decades. But if you look at like the 60s, 70s, 80s, and through much of the 90s, a lot of the tow rigs out there were gas V8s. Uh, I mean, of course, there were diesel engines, like you had the 6.2 liter GM diesel engine of like the 70s and the 80s. You had the Ford IDI uh, in both the 6.9 and the 7.3. Some of those weren't even turbocharged though. The sophistication was pretty low on them. The horsepower was super low. The torque was fairly impressive, but compared to a gas V8 for towing, they didn't necessarily make a lot of sense. And then of course, Ram came along with the, uh, the Cummins, or I should say Dodge, back in the day came along with the Cummins, and that was a very potent engine. And then we saw the introduction of the Power Stroke, and then of course, the Duramax, and those are now legendary nameplates that brought a lot of usable torque and longevity to the HD class of trucks. Uh, but before that, old school big block gas V8s were the norm. 
and you see that in the GM trucks, in the 454 engines, you see that in the Ford, in the, uh, what was it, 7.5, the 460, right? And, and they were old school, relatively low horsepower, high torque engines that would last a long time. And then of course the culmination of that was the 8.1 in the GMC, and then Ford response was the 6.8 V10. Very interesting point in history, and long lived engines with pretty potent torque even in 2022. Well, we're now entering the town of Fort Collins, Colorado, which is a beautiful city. And, you know, unless you're like in downtown LA or New York, these vehicles don't feel all that excessively big. If you look around us, I mean, it's just trucks and trucks and trucks and trucks for miles and miles. Uh, okay, there's Subarus because it's Colorado. But for the most part, you see a lot of full-size and HD trucks. And the United States, for the vast majority of the parts, is designed around trucks and SUVs because that's what dominates the roadways here. So we got big roads here in the US. These two vehicles in Europe, oh my god, horrific. They'd be just a nightmare. But out here, we got wide lanes, we got big parking lots, and even at 226.7 inches long in this Ford, eh pretty reasonable uh, and the GMC is a little shorter it's like 219 inches so a little bit more compact it's still enormous but unless you're trying to park them at the Whole Foods which you're probably not let's be honest if you own an excursion or a Yukon XL it's, it's not a horrible thing to drive even in a city we just got done at lunch at my favorite barbecue place not sponsored or anything but it's called Series Texas Barbecue amazing barbecue up here in Fort Collins and in Loveland Colorado and we were greeted by this massive downpour. This has kind of turned into a misadventure because now we're dealing with flash flooding. Although, to be honest, if there are two good vehicles to deal with flash flooding in, a Suburban and an Excursion are probably uh, not bad options considering I'm sitting here like nine feet above the ground. So uh, we're going to try to go north, see if we can find some better weather. Well, that rain stopped. That was a pretty insane storm. Uh, but we are now on the highway cruising along at 75 miles an hour. I've got the little GPS speed based app here so I know it's right on the money. And one thing I want to talk about is V10 which is kind of an unsung attribute of this engine. The smoothness, especially at idle, it's almost impossible to tell that this engine's running. That is how smooth it is. It's insanely vibration free. They, they, they had to work a lot on reducing vibrations because V10s, especially 90 degree V10s, are notoriously hard to keep smooth, and they just nailed it with this engine. Now cruising along at 75, we were spinning 2100, 2200 RPM, which isn't too bad, but the indicated top speed is about 100. I don't know if I'd want to do that though, because I think it would get pretty floaty and uh, pretty loose at those speeds. But at 75, eh, not bad at all. So, Brendan, we are uh, roughly 50 miles or so into our journey. What does your computer say you're getting in terms of fuel economy? You know, I don't know if you're gonna believe this or if I'm really gonna believe the computer to be honest with you, but uh, it's saying 13.2. Wow, 13.2 is pretty good. Now the Ford computer is saying 12.5. So uh, if the computers aren't to believe, be believed, I'd say you're, you're probably doing a little better. Um, now we just hit our turnaround spot and we're gonna make our way back south through Colorado. How is that uh, GMC as a road tripper? This thing is great. My butt's still not sore. <laughs> yeah, that thing's gotta have a, a heck of a good road trip ride. Is it pretty quiet too? Yeah, I mean, it's surprisingly quiet. Uh, the only thing that I really noticed the difference on versus my uh, old Suburban is the ride's a little bit harsher because it's got the uh, the beefed up axles. Yeah, those 2500s typically rode a little bit firmer uh, than the 1500s. But uh, apart from that, they're, they're good road trippers. The Ford is better than I thought too. I thought it'd be a little uncomfortable. It's only got a little bit of wind noise in here, but it's not horrible. Maybe just an old window seal or is it because you're driving a brick on wheels? No, it's not a window seal. I just think it's so unaerodynamic. It's just pushing a lot of wind out of the way. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, uh, these things these things don't look super aerodynamic, although I'm sure they are to some extent. Yeah, we'll go with to some extent. I <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> 
All right, Brendan, how far did we go? Let's take a look. 100, 100 miles on the nose. I'll verify that, but I think <laughs> uh, I think it's, it's pretty similar in the Ford. And what kind of fuel economy is it saying you're getting? 13.8. 13.8. I don't know. We'll see how good a 20-year-old uh, computer does with <laughs> estimating gas mileage. So I think that, <laughs> that Ford is sitting at like 13.4. Ooh, it's going to be a close one. It's going to be a close one. <laughs> All right, let's go see. All right, moment of truth. We're both going to use the same pump for consistency, and we'll see which one did better. And there it goes. So 100 miles driven exactly. So if I use 10 gallons of gas, it means I've averaged 10 miles per gallon. There you go. So hopefully it's less than that. <laughs> what did your computer say? The computer said 13.4. OK. Yeah. Let's see. All right, here comes the 30 second mark. We'll give it another squeeze. Oh, it took a lot. And there is a final calculation. 7.486 gallons. 100 divided by 7.486, 13.35. So pretty much on the money was what the computer was saying. So we'll call that 13.4 is the number to beat with the Yukon XL. All right, Brendan, moment of truth. You think it did better or worse than the Ford? I mean, the computer says better, so I guess I'm hoping for better, right? But uh, I don't know, it just seems a little ambitious to me. It is a much bigger engine. It is a much bigger engine. So we're already up to three. Man, it's gonna be oh, close. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be so close. Seven. Oh! oh. <laughs> Seven point one. Oh man. So now we wait for thirty seconds, and then we give it another squeeze. And what was mine like? Seven point four eight six or something? Seven something point, like that. Yeah, yeah. Just shy of seven point five. All right. It's gonna take a. It's gonna take a miracle in this one. <laughs> All right. Here comes thirty. There it goes. No way! Oh, Look at that! 0 0.1 of a gallon, or, or a little a little less than 0 0.1 of a gallon difference. So let's do the math here. So, 100 miles driven divided by 7.395 equals 13.5. <laughs> we tied! Pretty much! So, 13.4 <laughs> or 13.35 versus 13.5, but the... Yeah. GMC ever so slightly edged out the Ford. Maybe it's just those little bit of round curves that they <laughs> gave to it. Helps me slip through the air a little bit better. Now that's interesting, right? Because it's got a bigger engine. Yeah. But it's also lighter than the Ford yeah. and smaller dimensionally. So overall, 13.4 in the Ford, 13.5 in the GMC, which is not Prius levels, obviously, but no. not horrific. Right. Yeah, I mean, you get to tow your trailer, your boat, and your six kids in either one of these things. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right, yeah. Now, a huge thank you to Brandon. This was a hugely fun video. Let us know what you think in the comment section below, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.